Sandra Rucker was a product of the ruthless streets of Maryland in 69, where survival meant hustling from day one. She knew that to climb the ranks and gain popularity, she had to play by their rules. By high school, she was running with the top dogs, her light skin, fly hair, and fresh gear always catching the eye of desired hustlers. But this wasn't your average hood. It was the murder capital during the 80s and 90s, a time when every corner was a drug deal and danger lurked around every turn. New York dealers flocked in, looking to make a quick buck off the desperate locals. The streets were overrun with outsiders, outnumbering DC natives trying to make a name for themselves. The stakes were high, selling crack at double the price back home was worth the risk. But with bigger money came bigger threats. Every day, New York dealers were getting knocked out left and right in this wild criminal world. And Santra was about to find herself caught up in it all. New York cats were known for starting drama over drugs and women, but in DC and VA, they took it to a whole new level of ruthlessness. They didn't take kindly to outsiders stepping on their turf. And Santra? She was hot property in her neighborhood, gorgeous, street savvy, and connected. She didn't have time for petty high school drama. She was too busy making moves as the go-to girl for hair services. You see, Small towns like Maryland and Virginia may seem quiet on the outside, but up close, they're just as cutthroat as any big city. Everyone knows everyone's business, especially when it comes to drugs. And Santra knew all the local players, dealers, users, you name it. But then along came East New York's notorious kingpin, Daryl Kendu Raleigh, a man feared and respected in equal measure with his sights set on expanding his empire to Maryland. It was only a matter of time before he crossed paths with Santra Rucker, and things were bound to get messy. Step into the world of No Tears for Black Girls, a riveting exploration of real-life crimes involving black women, long dismissed and overlooked by the mainstream media. These stories will shake you to your core and reveal the unbridled truth in all its gritty and unapologetic glory. Come take this ride with us and give these silenced voices the platform they deserve. This audio series is created, written, and produced by my partner in crime and the brains behind our operation, John Reedberg. I am your host and voice of distinction, Samantha Paul. If y'all feeling our content, hit that follow button and leave a five-star review. For any requests or suggestions, holla at us on no tears for black girls at gmail.com and show love by downloading the Alive podcast app, owned and operated by my black queens, amplifying our voices. Black voices. Let's make some noise. New York City is a cutthroat jungle. To come up and expand your territory, you gotta move smart. Kendu knew this too well. He needed a chick with connections, street savvy, got her own spot, and knows how to play the game. But not just any chick would do. She gotta be an icy dime piece, draped in designer threads and dripping in cash. Most importantly, she has to have a soft spot for hustlers like Ken Du. Cause let's keep it 100. Ken Du couldn't just pop up in a new state and start slanging without some local connects. It's all about strategizing and making power moves, and Ken Du was king of the chessboard. While Santra held it down back home with their lil one, Ken Du's drug empire in Maryland was getting heat from the feds. They were cracking heads left and right, but Ken Du always stayed one step ahead by constantly switching up his spots. Shit was hitting the fan, junkies snitching on each other trying to save themselves. And they weren't letting up on Santra neither. They knew she ride or die for Ken Du and were after her too, trying to pin something on her. But all they found were tapes of fiends going gaga over Santra's looks and money. No solid proof of any illegalities. But then shit went left when Santra's digits got caught up in the mix. Thank God she was living her best life in Jamaica, leaving her nephew in charge of their Virginia trap spot. Little did she know he was running things for Ken Du while she was away. And just when things couldn't get more wild, both Kendu and Santra showed up at a funeral for a big-time New York OG. Wrong place, wrong time. The whole city was there, 
including some heavy hitters in the dope game who had their eyes on Kendu's operation. But that wasn't the only thing going down at that funeral. The feds were also present, snapping photos of everyone and sending undercover agents to record any shady dealings. They had been keeping tabs on Kendu for a while now, and when they stumbled upon a crackhead who claimed he bought from the couple's house, with Santra's nephew as the seller, it was enough for them to raid the place and haul everyone in. Kendu, Santra, and her nephew included. Inside their opulent Richmond mansion, the cops made a mind-blowing discovery. Heaps of cash and dope stashed in every lavish room. The feds had been building their case against infamous drug kingpin Kendu for months, just waiting for the perfect time to take him down. And this was it. He and his partner in crime, Santra, were swiftly arrested and handcuffed without hesitation. As they sat in separate interrogation rooms, Santra was their prime target. The feds were itching to get her to flip on Kendu and spill all of his dirty secrets. But Santra remained unflappable, denying any knowledge of his illegal activities or even her own nephew's involvement. She refused to rat, even when faced with the possibility of spending years behind bars. But as the trial loomed ahead, Santra learned a brutal truth. Her own boyfriend had been using her nephew as a pawn to push his poison. Betrayed and stunned, Santra held strong to her plea of not guilty and decided to face off against the feds in court. What ensued were weeks of grueling proceedings filled with damning witnesses, wiretaps, informants, phone calls, and video footage. The feds pulled out all the stops to prove their case against Kendu and Santra. They even brought in footage of the two at a drug dealer's funeral in New York, clearly showing them cozying up to known criminals and sharing laughs with them. But Santra maintained her innocence, insisting she had no clue about Kendu's shady dealings. However, the jury wasn't buying it. How could she not have known when she was rubbing elbows with these same criminals at a funeral? It was clear that Santra had been caught in a dangerous game of love and power. But things took an even darker turn when it was revealed that Kendu had paid people to testify against Santra. He was willing to throw her under the bus and label her as an accomplice in order to save himself. And as the trial went on, Santra discovered that her boyfriend had a whole other life, complete with a wife and children. In an exclusive interview with Feds Magazine, Santra revealed the truth of her downfall, manipulated and played by a hustler, masquerading as a lover. She was just another victim of the streets, lured in by Kendu's smooth words and empty promises. But what started as a love affair soon turned into a deadly game, where she and Kendu were players willing to do whatever it takes to come out on top. The streets of Virginia were ruled by the infamous duo Daryl Kendu Raleigh and Santra LaVon Rucker, their drug empire held together by ruthless force. But when their luck finally ran out and they were caught by the feds, they were hit with conspiracy charges and sentenced to life in prison. Santra, once a powerful queenpin in her own right, now found herself locked behind bars, facing an unimaginable 390-year sentence without parole. Her loved ones were in disbelief. She had never pulled the trigger or taken a life, yet she was given a punishment that even serial killers would envy. But Santra refused to break under pressure, remaining fiercely loyal to her partner in crime, Kendu. Despite losing her mother and missing out on watching her daughter grow up with cerebral palsy, Santra fought relentlessly for her appeal. Even R&B sensation Alicia Keys reached out after reading her interview with Feds Magazine where she graced the cover. Despite earning degrees in culinary arts and landscaping while in prison, all of Santra's appeals were denied. But through it all, she remained unbreakable, a true queen of the streets who refused to give up. Even behind bars, Santra showed exceptional conduct and helped open a new women's facility. After serving time alongside infamous inmates Jamila T. Davis and Aisha Hall, she was eventually released back into the world she once ruled with Kendu by her side. For years, Santra's daughter fought tirelessly for her freedom. She was only two when Santra was taken away. 
But in 2018, justice finally came as President Obama granted clemency to 46 individuals under the Fair Sentencing Act. And on March 19, 2022, at 53 years old, Sandra walked out of prison and into the arms of her family. Since her release, Sandra has been readjusting to life outside and has avoided interviews or recent photos. But this year, she celebrated her birthday surrounded by loved ones. Kendu also regained his freedom around the same time and was there to welcome her home. But let this be a cautionary tale for young women caught up in the dangerous lifestyle of drug kingpins. These boys may seem enticing with their flashy lifestyles and promises of love, but they will ultimately lead you down a path of ruin. Just look at Santra Rucker. She was once just like you, caught up in the game and now she's doing life. And she's not alone. Many sisters will never see the light of day again. Don't fall for the trap these street boys set. Don't end up like Santra, trapped behind bars. Her story should serve as a warning to all of you. Welcome home, Santra. May your future be blessed. But for the rest of y'all, watch your back. Because this game, it ain't worth it. Thank you for listening to No Tears for Black Girls. Please download the Alive Podcast app and follow us on all major podcast platforms to stay updated with our latest content. If there is a topic or true crime case that you would like us to cover, please send us an email at notearsforblackgirls at gmail.com or visit our website, notearsforblackgirls.com and leave us a voice message through our contact page. And always remember, stay loved, stay blessed, and be safe.